You can find the fill gaps and filter data heading underneath the tools pane here on the right hand side of my screen, navigating to the pipeline tab and you can see the heading over here. The fill gaps wall tree pipeline operation fills trajectory gaps by using a wall tree quintic spline and this is best used to fill small gaps. As a general rule, the max gap length should be 5% of the sampling frequency. In this example, my sampling frequency is 100 Hz, and so my max gap length is set to 5 frames. Also in this example, we can see that there are numerous small gaps in the marker that I've selected. By hitting play, we can see that those gaps now disappear. The fill gaps rigid body pipeline operation can be used on rigid body marker clusters containing four or more markers. If a marker trajectory drops off, the fill gaps rigid body operation uses the trajectory of the remaining markers to interpolate the missing trajectory. You need rigid body clusters of at least four markers because with the three remaining markers, we can still recreate a plane. Whereas if we had three markers and one dropped off, the two remaining points can only make a line. In this example, I have gaps in two markers, one in the head segment and one in the pelvis segment. As such, I'm going to use two pipeline operations, the rigid body fill gaps twice. I can now double click on these to give them the appropriate names. I can also change the maximum gap length. In this case, I'm confident that my data is good, so I'm going to change it from 25 frames to 50. Now, I'm going to select the trajectories to use to recreate the missing gaps. In this case here, I'm going to use the markers on the head from my gap filling list. I'm going to turn the macro off so that the list populates down here. I'm also going to do the same for the pelvis. Now when I highlight my two markers to see the gaps, when I press play, I now have 100% of my markers labelled. The kinematic fill pipeline operation uses the kinematics of the segments to fill the gaps of markers that make up that particular segment. In this example here, I have gaps in my right toe marker and my right heel marker, which both make up my right foot segment. In order to use the kinematic fill pipeline operation, we first need to run the kinematic fit. And this is found underneath the core processing available operation heading. So I'm gonna add that to my list. Now I'm gonna add my fill gaps kinematic pipeline operation. Again, like before, I'm gonna double click here and call this the right foot. In this example, I'm going to keep my max gap length to 25 frames, but like before, this time I'm going to choose my segment from my segment list, and in this case, it's the right foot. I'm also going to turn off my macro. Now, when I hit play, it's going to run the kinematic fit, and then it's going to run the fill gaps kinematic fill. As you can see, the gaps in those markers have now disappeared. We can filter data from analog devices such as force plates by using a low pass Butterworth filter. By selecting the properties, we can adjust the first frame and the last frame. We can also set a cutoff frequency, and in this case, I'm going to select 12 Hz. 
We can also change the filter order from a fourth order zero lag filter to a second order that does introduce a lag. We can also choose which devices that we want to filter. In this example, I don't want to filter my Naraxone EMG. In this example here, I have got my FZ of my first force plate selected. And we can see here, if I zoom in, that there is a little bit of noise over here. Now, if I lock my screen and run the filter, we can see that the filter has been applied. Nexus 2 provides several options on how to filter trajectory data. These options are the VCM filter, the Butterworth filter, and the Waltering filter. The VCM filter stands for Vicon Clinical Manager and is a legacy spline. It's there if you want to use it. The Butterworth filter for trajectories has the same parameters as the Butterworth filter for analog devices, where you can select the first and the last frames, the cutoff frequency, whether it's a fourth order filter with a zero lag or a second order filter with a lag, and which trajectories you want to filter. The Waltering filter for trajectories allows you to choose between the GCV mode, which stands for General Cross Validation, or the MSE mode, which stands for Mean Squared Error. The GCV mode automatically detects the level of noise within the trajectories and chooses its own filter. The MSE mode allows you to manually select the level of noise, with the units being in millimetres squared, by default, this is set to 20. More information can be found from the website that is below. To see whether the filter has been applied or not, we select a marker. In this case, I've selected the right ASI marker. We can see here that the position data of the components looks relatively smooth. However, if we change the view to the acceleration, we can see that there is a lot of noise in over here. In this example, I'm going to use the Butterworth filter, which is set to 6 Hz. When I run this, we can now see that the acceleration data is nice and smooth. Don't forget to change it back to the displacement. The filter model outputs Butterworth filter is a low pass filter that is run on your data after the model outputs have been mathematically calculated. In this case here, I'm going to run the dynamic plug and gate model. We can see here that we now have some model outputs. In this case, I'm going to choose my left ankle angle and plot it. Just like the Butterworth filter for analog data and the trajectories, you're able to select the first and last frame, the cutoff frequency, the filter order, and the model outputs. Running the Butterworth filter will smooth these model outputs. There are a few other things to consider when using the filters. Firstly, only use a filter once. Overfiltering will result in a loss of real data. Secondly, the order in which you use the filters matters. Generally speaking, you would filter your trajectories and your ground reaction forces before modeling your data. The alternate is to filter your model outputs after you've modeled your data. You would do one or the other 
you wouldn't filter your trajectories and your ground reaction forces as well as your model outputs. The final two pipeline operations that we are going to be talking about today are the delete optional subject marker and delete unlabeled trajectories pipeline operations. In order to use the delete optional subject marker operation, we first need to select our optional markers. In this case here, they are my left and right lateral and medial femoral condyles respectively. In my properties for these markers, we can see that they are set to optional. As with other pipeline operations, I can turn the macro off to keep these names consistent for future reference. Running this selected operation will delete those markers. Underneath the delete unlabeled trajectories pipeline operation properties, we can check or uncheck delete using the max gap length, we can alter the max gap length, and we can change the first and the last frame.